Welcome back to our lovely ecology videos. Today's discussion is about ecological interactions. Basically, the interactions between in the ecosystem level and the community level, which affects each organism and population's habitat and its niche. So the first thing we want to do is review the levels. We have the individual, the organism, the smallest thing. Population is a group of the same species, community, all the biotic things living in that area, so different plants and animals. Ecosystem are all of the biotic and abiotic aspects of that area. A biome is a specific type of ecosystem, and then your biosphere, which is your whole world and atmosphere surrounding it. So that's just a quick review of the levels. So first up, we want to talk about the ecosystem level and the interactions between biotic and abiotic factors. So if you look at this picture, you'll see that there are both biotic and abiotic factors. You'll see the water flowing. Then you can think about the pH of the water, the temperature of the water, and also the temperature of the air, how much humidity is in the air, etc. Those are all the abiotic factors. And then you can see the biotic factors, the plants living there, that person sitting nicely on that log. And you got to think about the interactions. So if you look first, the temperature. Well, the temperature of the water and the air affects what could live there. So plants, certain plants and animals can only live in certain temperatures. There's also the pH level of the water and the soil. So if it's too acidic or too basic, it might affect the amount of plants, plant life that can also be there. And then also the soil type, which kind of incorporates both pH and temperature. But if there's not a lot of soil, there's got to be a lot of moss and lichen. So if you look at the picture, there are actually a lot of plants living there, but they're small plants that need a lot of water and don't need much soil. Because if the bit plants are too big, then the water is going to destroy them. So you also have to take into effect the waterfall and the fact that that's give, putting pressure down on those plants. And if they are too big, then the water will break them. So it's perfect for that area to have all of those mosses and small shrubs and plants. You'll never really see a tree growing out into the waterfall because the water would never allow that to happen. So then well, let's look at the community level. And there, because at the community you have different species, different populations living there, they interact in different ways. And the Five main types of interactions are competition, predation, mutualism, commensalism, and parasitism. And each one of these interactions affect the community in a different way. So first off, we want to discuss biodiversity of your community. And biodiversity is basically looking at a community and how many different species are there. And richness is the word that we use to discuss the number of unique species in that ecosystem. So if you look at a forest and there are five different types of plants and one animal, one type of animal, the richness would be six because five plus one would be six. Now another aspect of biodiversity is, is the abundance or relative abundance. And this is important in figuring out how important that species is. So if there's a forest, as I said before, and there are five plants and there are a whole bunch of each type of plant, but one animal and really actually only one of that animal, the abundance of that animal would be one. But each plant, say there are 50 pine trees, the abundance would be 50 for that pine tree. And the high richness and abundance is needed for high biodiversity, because if you only have one of something in the ecosystem or community, then it's not that important and it doesn't bring a lot of variety in. So basically in a community, in order to get those interactions, you want a lot of variety. So the first interaction that affects the community a lot, especially at the beginning, is competition. And this is a interaction that is detrimental to both species because it causes competitive exclusion, which means that if two species compete, they can't live in the same place, and it makes one move out. And a major example of this would be with barnacles. Barnacles are tiny little things that live in intertidal zones. So they live between high and low tide. An area that sometimes has water and sometimes doesn't. And you really actually want to live 
closer to low tide because you get water more often and therefore get fed more often. So there was a competition between these two species of barnacles. You can look and see that there's a brown and a blue. So the brown ones up here lost the competition. So they had to move further up in the tidal zone and then the blue ones won it. So then if you look at this example, it can also discuss the niche, the fundamental versus realized niche. Now a niche is different than a habitat. A habitat is the area, the home of the certain organism you're discussing. Now a niche though is everything that that organism needs. So there's a fundamental niche which is any place that that animal can live, plant or animal. So the niche of the brown barnacle was the entire tidal zone, intertidal zone, and the blue would be only from here down to here. And then you get the realized niche. The realized niche, as you see, the brown one changed. And it's because this is where it ended up living because of competition. So up here is the brown barnacles realized niche. It's where it went, hey, I realize this is where I'm going to live. It's how I think of it. Because the brown one has it down here, and that's where it actually lives. So that's what happens when things compete. Another thing that could happen when organisms compete is something called character displacement. And this is when evolution comes into effect, and they evolve so that they reduce competition. So for instance, Darwin's finches change beak size. They evolved to have different beaks so they don't compete anymore because they were competing over the same seeds. And so now that they have different beaks, they can eat different things, reducing competition. The other way to reduce competition is to be happy and share. And this is called resource partitioning. So this little guy, this pretty happy bird, is only eating the flowers and then going to leave the leaves for something else to eat. So there, instead of competing over the entire plant, they're gonna share that resource. So these are things that can happen when competition occurs in your community. So as much as it's technically detrimental to both species, it's not detrimental to the community because it helps the community grow. Now the next interaction is one that people often know about already. It's called predation. And the good thing about predation which whereas a predator eats a prey, is it helps the animals evolve to become different. So all of these predators have evolved to get to be better predators. So this spider is able to have a web, make a web, and these this wolf has really long teeth. The eagle has the beak and the killing talons so, to, so it can capture its prey, and then the tiger is able to blend in with its environment. So these are really nice predators. And then on the flip, si flip side, your prey learn how to hide. So they use things like mimicry and camouflage so that they don't get eaten. Mimicry is when you actually mimic or copy something that could be poisonous. So those two snakes look similar, not really sure which one's poisonous and which one's not. And then camouflage is when you go ahead and try and blend in with your environment, like a lot of spiders and insects do. Now, <clears throat> you can't forget your plant predators. Herbivores are plant predators because they eat the plants. Now plants can actually defend themselves because they have thorns and poisons that help them. So they've also evolved in order to not be eaten. So again, predator, prey, predation sounds like it's bad for the community, but it actually helps keep a stable environment and things keep evolving and adapting. Next relationship would be the parasitism. Parasitism is the yucky relationship. But it is different than predation because the parasite feeds on a host or receives benefit at the expense of the host, but it doesn't want to kill the host. So there are two categories. You have ectoparasites and endoparasites. Ecto would be outside the body and endo is inside the body. And the important piece here is that the parasite doesn't kill the host, it just feeds off of it. 
Now the next one is mutualism, and this is your happy-go-lucky. They play nice. Both species benefit. So the big uh, idea is that ants and aphids, that one, both things benefit any bees and flowers because there's pollination in food. So those are beneficial to both parties. The next one is commensalism. And this one is confusing because one species benefits and the other is not affected. And it's hard to tell whether something's affected or not. But a lot of times they think that the humpback whale and the barnacle are commensalism because the barnacle is getting a free ride and getting fed and the humpback whale isn't really affected. So that's an important interaction, but really hard to figure out. So when discussing it, you have to kind of say, and this one is not affected, so that people realize what you're talking about. So those are all the interactions in the community. They also affect how much, how the populations grow and the size and what's going on with the populations. But today in this video, we're gonna look just want to look at the communities and how this changes the community and how it affects that. We're going to just stop with the interactions and end. And the next video we'll be discussing populations and how the these different interactions can affect the population and the growth. So we'll have some fun with that some other day.